Hello everyone. It is October 12th and it's a, uh, what is today? Tuesday? Today's a Tuesday. And I am doing, I'm painting some underglazes on these platters and a few people have asked me to um, do some more videos with using underglazes. And so I have a big show coming up this weekend um, called the Weber, Weber, Weber um, Pumpkin. Oh, there's Sophie. Sophie. Um, <laughs> uh, Weber's Pumpkin Festival this weekend. So I'm doing a lot of pumpkin stuff. So this is what I've been painting. Um, I've got three platters done. I've got, gosh, I guess, I don't know, about 10 or 12 bigger pumpkins. And um, so I thought I'd show you how I do these. I did a I did a plate also, and I've got some all my all my biscuits sitting here around me to do the to paint uh, the underglazes on. I, I guess I'll do pumpkins on them. I always hate to paint um, too many seasonal things because I don't I don't do a lot of shows because as you can see I work out of my house, so I don't have a a ton of room to have you know uh, production a bunch of stuff sitting around. So if you work out of your house, you have to kind of um, be really careful about your inventory, you know. I mean, make inventory that you're going to sell. And, you know, if you, like I said, if you do a lot of seasonal stuff and then you get stuck with it, um, then you got to store it till the next year. But anyway, um, I can tell it's going to rain. My sinuses are... It looks like it's going to rain. It keeps getting darker and darker out there. Anyway... Um, so anyway, so let's get, let's get glazing. Um, it's October, like I said, it's October 12th and it's still pretty hot. It was like 84 yesterday here in Cincinnati, Ohio. And, but then this weekend, um, I can see hair sticking out. <laughs> um, this weekend is supposed to be like 65 for the show. So that's a little chilly. I like the seventies. I guess you shouldn't be picky, right? Supposed to rain too, though. Of course, supposed to storm on Saturday, which you know would be nice because um, I lost my tent in the last show, so I had to pay four hundred dollars for another white tent. And um, I'm hoping it. I hope this one doesn't. Anyway, I hope this one doesn't get ruined if it's a big storm. But we'll see. I wish they would let me bring my horse trailer. If you've been following me for a while, you see that I have a renovated horse trailer with a. Um, a little retail shop inside to sell my pottery out of, and it's so nice. Um, I can pull up if it storms. I can just close the door. But not all shows are letting me bring it yet. So I think um, next year I'm going to really focus on shows that let me bring my trailer. So this might be my last year for Weber's Pumpkin Festival because they don't let me bring it there, which is kind of crazy because they have a huge huge outdoor space and there's like 400 vendors and it's well organized it's a great show but um there's some other ones that you know love people bringing trailers so anyway enough chit chat right let's um let's lower you down here so you can see there we go there we go okay so um these platters I make, um, I can tell you, they really sell well. They're one of my one of my best sellers, and I make them um, out of a out of a mold that I bought. So I am just gonna sponge, and they're they're pretty good. Um, the the plates I make like to crack. I don't know why, but sand um, this down a little bit. And yes, it's wet, so I don't have to worry about um, too much. I don't have to worry about this, the dust, you know, really, because it's still damp. But these Diamond Core Tool sanding pads, they're not cheap. I can't remember what I paid for this. I know it was over $20, though. I thought when I ordered I was going to get this, you know, this, this big sanding pad. No, it's just a tiny little thing. But uh, it really does, it really is nice. Like I said, it's good to keep it, you know, keep your work surface damp so you don't have any, um, you really don't want to breathe the, breathe the dust in. I 
and you don't want any rough edges. And you can even wet these sanding pads. So like if your surface is dry, you just wet the sanding pad itself and um, I think that looks good. You can wet the sanding, or that, yeah, can't talk. You can wet the sanding pad and then you don't have the dust either, so. Uh, clay dust is not, not good for you to inhale. Which no one told me that when I started, started doing pottery. Over. There we go. Okay. I got a few little spots here. Thought I, thought I had these pretty well cleaned off already. Sorry about the noise, probably. Okay. Alrighty. So, as you can see, well, you really can't see, but I'm using. Um, Amigo velvet underglazes that I put in this, uh, it's like an old bead tray. And I really like the Amigo. Um, I haven't had any problems with them sticking to the kiln shelf or sticking to each other. So right now that's, that's what I prefer. So, okay. So I'm going to, let me get some of these. Get my glazes over here a little bit more. There you go. So, okay. So, I'm going to start out with the darkest glaze, and I've got like four colors of orange here. And what I, th what I did was I just bought, um, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. I bought um, Amica's Bright Orange. And then I just added some red to it and some brown. I made one color. And then I added um, a little more. <coughs> a little more brown to it. And I came up with this color here, which is really nice. Um, dark, dark uh, orange. So anyway, so I started out with, I started with the dark color first. And um, I just kind of paint the outlines. The first one I I, I kind of drew on with a pencil. Um, but since I've done a few of them now, I don't uh, do a pencil anymore. I just freehand it. I'm not one of these people to, um, I don't know, try to be too exact. <laughs> I usually just, I usually just wing it, All right? So hopefully you can see, as I know it's going to kind of be, hmm, I know it's kind of going to be upside down for you guys. Let's see if I can move you around a little bit. There we go. So yeah, it will be. And I just use the kind of cheapo brushes from, I guess these are from Hobby Lobby and all the paint's falling off of them. I guess they're, I don't like brushes that are, um, they're too, th the, the, the bristles are too thin, like horse hair and there's hardly any bristles and they bend. But I don't like them too stiff either so that, um, the paints, the bristles are so stiff that they're brushing the glaze off as you're brushing it on. So I like to get them all on here so I know, get kind of the, the composition I want, where I want them and
Yeah, my head's getting stuffed up. I'm allergic to mold, so and I know when, when there's rain coming, my head gets stuffed up. We'll put a little one over here. That yeah, looks pretty good. So I got my composition on there. So now I can start layering colors. And um, so I think I think what I'll do is so for the stems, I just let's see. For the stems, I just threw some brown in here. I put a little bit of green in here. Let's put a little more brown. And then, then I threw a little bit of white in here. And that's how I came up with this color for the stems. And I just Mix that just a little bit so I have a couple of different colors of brown and there we go. And see, so I just mix a little green, a little brown, a little white. That way when I do the stems, um, they're not all one color. But I think what I'm gonna do is put the, I don't like that middle one. Let's see. I don't like where I put those brown little indentations. So I'm going to move them. So yeah, you can just paint over. That one down the center didn't look right. So I think what I'm going to do is put one further over. There we go. I just want to get a kind of idea where I'm going to put them at. That's good, I think. All right. can't make it my mind. All right, this is fine. All right, so I'm in a, a brighter color now. This is a little bit lighter orange. This one, um, like I said, they all started with the, the bright orange. Just kind of, I don't want to cover up the dark all the way, but um, there we go. Can't, can't say I'm the, the best painter, but it works for me. There's some amazing painters out there. So, um, yeah, so I, I like to layer them a little bit. Let's see here. And all pumpkins aren't the same. They are they are pretty orange, but there's some pumpkins that have um, lots of different colors. I like the pumpkins. Uh, my favorite pumpkins are the ones that have like the knobs on them, and they're all different colors, and they're they're not perfect, you know. Like 
sometimes I like the short and the fat ones and sometimes I like the really tall ones and so here's the bright orange I really haven't touched this too much so I haven't this is pretty much and just gonna put some of that on there And you really, the lighter colors should be kind of near the top because I imagine the, if there's the sun's out, it would be lighter on the top of the pumpkin where you can see where the sun's shining on it, right? Helps give it a little bit more um, dimension. see I'm going to go back to this little bit darker color here kind of blend that in oh there's my I don't know if you can hear that I guess my son is uh, playing a video game he's talking to the television you can tell your kids you know I'm doing a video and then uh doesn't matter they still still make noise <laughs> yesterday I wanted to do a video and it seems like everybody neighbor was cutting her grass and we have our windows open because we don't have the air on right now that's another reason I'm hoping it gets cold sooner to cool it down a little bit but it gets pretty cool at night Okay, so I kind of blended that in, um, but this pumpkin's in front of this pumpkin here, so I'm going to add a little bit of brightness in front of that to show that that's in front of there, and this pumpkin's in front of that one, so I'm just going to highlight that, and I'm going to add a little, even a little touch of yellow here. Just to kind of show the lighter colors. And then I gotta try to get my brush dries out a little bit. I like to blend it in a little bit. It helps the Hi Sophie. This is my Brittany, my Brittany Spaniel Sophie, who is I guess she's almost twelve. But she's really she's really part goat. Because <laughs> she she eats my tomato plants. She roozles in the tomato my tomato plants all the time and I hardly got any tomatoes this year because she goes out there and eats them all. When I had strawberry plants, she ate most of the strawberries. So now we just call her Sophie the Goat, even though she's supposed to be a Brittany Spaniel or Brittany, um, go after birds. Not that we're hunters. I couldn't, we are not hunters. I couldn't kill anything. My sister-in-law makes fun of me because I, I'll save syrup, I'll save worms off the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more brown here. Put a little bit more definition in there. I paint on Bisqueware. Um, I, I prefer to paint on Bisqueware. I, People always say they like to paint on greenware. Um, 
because if they make a mistake they can wipe it off but I don't know when I when I've painted on greenware if you make a mistake you are wiping off the clay you know you're making indentations in the clay and you're constantly trying to smooth the clay back out so I don't know I I'm, I'm not a fan of um, painting on greenware Trying to blend in this brown here a little bit more that I put on here. I don't want I want it to be a smoother. I want it to look dark, but a little smoother. Is that, is that, there we go. That makes sense. And you'll I'll hold this up in a minute, and you can see it. I have to show you the. Um, the pumpkins that came out of the kiln down at um, the Dunham Recreation Center where I teach. I made a few pumpkins down there and I will unload that kiln tomorrow morning. So I'll take some pictures and I could paint on these all day. I at some point you have to say, stop, Lisa, stop, you've done enough. But <laughs> it's There's something about painting pumpkins, I don't know. Like they're not they're not hard, so and you really can't mess them up. I mean and they're just so kind of enjoyable. So okay, so that's nope, oh, hang on, hang on. Thought I was done, I'm not. I gotta blend this in a little bit more. <laughs> like I said, stop, stop. Okay. And sometimes you gotta like sit back too and look. Like, you know, you get so close to it that um you really don't you really don't see it. So kind of nice every once in a while to um, kind of sit back and okay this side looks a little dark I'm gonna add a little bit brighten that up just a little bit sometimes I feel like I sound like Bob Ross maybe you guys ever of course if you're younger you probably don't know who Bob Ross is but yeah, his, his stuff is still on um, channel 40, the PBS, the public station. I always love listening to him. So, okay, so that's it so far. Doesn't look like much, does it? But, okay, so now I'm going to add the stems. So here's my little tray for the stems. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to use this thinner, a little bit thinner brush. Let's just want to say fine, the fine touch. It's number six, whatever it is. So I'm going to wet it. Put a little bit of water in here because I don't think I want just a few drops of water with the sponge. Okay. And now I'm gonna put up oh, that's a little too wet. Get some green in there. I think my green kinda faded in with the water. Bring in a little bit more. And up. There we go. Okay. Don't make it dizzy here. There we go. I think that's better. Okay. So now I'm going to do the stems. And I just want to kind of get them in there and get the shape of them. And then I'm going to go back and fill them in. Like I 
because I like to kind of get the composition first. And then go back, like I said, I, let's see. go I'd like to leave these um, lighter but under glazes I fire to come five and I know my kiln even then fires a little hot so I don't really do a hold anymore unless I have a glaze that I know might pit then I do a hold but I don't like to do holds anymore because it gets my kiln closer to six and some of my glaze some of my clay is the sand standard 266 and that um, dark clay does not like to be fired to cone six it will it will bubble not the glazes the clay will bubble it's called bloating and so I don't like to get that close to uh, that temperature now if I was doesn't really matter for doing a glaze, but the hotter underglazes get, the more they'll burn out. Like the greens, the greens like to turn brown. Um, I mean, reds will burn out. If you've seen any of my other videos, the reds burned out. Left, you know, I had all these colors blended in, and they all burned out except the orange, and then they ended up with orange flowers, which was fine, but not not what I had intended there we go let's add a little bit of green there we go. you can't you can't really see it but I'm putting a touch of green in there green is kind of blended blended in with the brown so I'm gonna And then I'm going to put some green leaves on here. And by putting this underglaze on the, this paper towel, it um, kind of takes some of the water out and makes it a little bit stronger. But I don't want these burning out brown. And even though this this tray, you would think they would dry out more, but it's but the tray actually um, holds the moisture in pretty good. I hope you can see this well enough. I'll hold it up again so you can see the... You can 
to see what I'm doing. Right now I'm trying to put some little curly cues on here. But I don't know if those will show up in the final firing or not. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to smooth these colors out just a little bit. They're a little chunky. It's really hard for me to paint really fine lines with a paintbrush, but okay. So now, now I'm going to paint the grass. So here's what it looks like so far. You can kind of see just, you know, some detail there. All right, now I'll paint some grass. So in this, the grass, you just got to kind of, like I said, get the colors in there or get this, get the grass blades in there. And then you can go back and go over them because You want them a little bit darker than, you know, one stroke's going to give you. I don't know if they put as much pigment as in there, these underglazes as they, as they used to. I don't know. Seems like they used to be darker. But it could be the water that I've added. I do. When I'm done using them, if they seem like they're kind of dry, I will take a spray bottle and I just mist, mist the whole thing with a little bit of water and then it lays on the top and keeps it from drying out too much. So they really don't, I really don't have a problem with them drying out too much unless, unless I'm away from them for a really long time, like over, over a couple months maybe. Trying to think of any other questions you guys would have. Like I said, this is um, stoneware. The clay I use is um, B mix. It does have grog in it. Um, you really need the grog when you're hand building because um, it just really helps it from cracking. So I bought the B mix without grog. Mm -hmm. And it was it was really nice to throw on the wheel, but the hand build, um, yeah, it liked to it liked to crack. <laughs> so now I'm adding a little bit of this chartreuse, just to give my leaf stems a little bit of um, dimension. And if you have any, um, like if you you're painting and, and you get any chunks of clay you want to get that off because when you put your clear over the top the um, the chunks will like poke through and you'll have a, a matte spot and it you know and I don't know how you know well that would hold up in the dishwasher so I always, you know, like to say that mine are dishwasher, microwave safe. I'm going to put all my stoneware in the microwave and the dishwasher. It wouldn't be that much of a problem to hand wash, but. So, yeah, so I like the um, Laguna's B mix with grog. But any, any clay with grog will do. Now the Stainer 266, the dark clay I use, that doesn't have as much grog in it, but it does, um, it does hold up really well. It's a hand building, you know, you can hand build with it and it's not too bad. Just 
you can probably hear my dog's tail nails walking around the hardwood floor. Around and around. Oh, there's Ernie. Hello, Ernie. Hi. Ernie's my Yorkie, who is partially partially deaf, partially blind. He's like 14 and a half years old. He's sleeping under my feet now. <laughs> I have beds for him everywhere. Okay. Now, so I got the grass on there. There's the grass. All right, now I am going to add some of this like pebbles underneath. And I just kind of just kind of dot them on at first. Like I said, I like to get the the composition in there. I don't know. And then, then I'll go back. And you don't want your pebbles to all be the same size, because then that's I'm always like gotta be real careful about that. I'm always wanting to because it's so much easier just to make them all one size, right? Okay, so I got the composition down. Now I'm going to rinse my brush out and I'm going to go back and I'm just going to kind of wet these a little bit because I don't want them, I really don't want them that dark. windy outside so maybe we're gonna get some rain today we were dry for so long we were bagging for rain our grass was dying and my flowers were dying they weren't looking too good my garden is mostly weeds right now so after this show hopefully we the ground will soften up and I can go out there and Pull the weeds out when I'm not doing pottery. I'm going to have a show at my house on November 6th. Let's see here. Okay, so I have, I'm going to have some Christmas trees for that. And I can show you how to make those if you want. So I think that looks good. So <clears throat> now we gotta let it dry. It only takes a couple of minutes to dry. Much better blow on it. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> That looks pretty good. I like the uh, I like the deeper orange color in this one. Like I said, when you fire it, they could all come out the same color. Okay. So now I'm gonna get. Oh, let me show you my. Well, this is drying. So this is a Christmas tree I'm working on. If you can see that. I can hold it back further. There we go. So I did that. I made this with strips of clay around a foam mold. Make sure you cover your foam mold with paper. <laughs> I didn't because I thought, oh, it's not going to stick to the foam, which it doesn't stick to the foam, but the clay gets into the foam and then it won't, doesn't want to come out. So anyway, so my, my, what I want to do here is, well, this one was, was the first one I made. The next one, I think I'm going to make these holes bigger so I can put marbles in here. I bought clear glass marbles. 
that I can put in afterwards so that when you put a candle underneath, um, the marbles will light up like ornaments, like lights. So, but we can play with that later. <laughs> I told myself I was not going to, I was not going to touch that until after this pumpkin festival. I got to get through the pumpkin festival. Okay. So, let's bring a little closer here. Okay, so I'm going to get my applicator bottle out and I use a Zyam applicator bottle, number 20. And I just leave it full. I don't, um, I don't empty it out in between. And I use uh, Amigos Jet Black Velvet Underglaze. And I put a little bit of water in there just to thin it out a little bit. If you turn it upside down and it leaks out, then it's too thin. And if it clogs up constantly, um, then it's too thick. Sometimes I have to, if it really starts clogging up, I, I take it all back out of here and I put it through a sieve and then I start all over again. So, okay, so. This is one of those things where you kind of got to move kind of fast because the slower your strokes, um, it's the thicker the lines. So you can see the difference there. Um, it just makes it pop versus if you don't outline it. I really like to outline mine. And you want to always try to pull the applicator away from you so you don't clog it up so easy. just constantly wiping it off on a paper towel and it gets really clogged just stick the pin back in it Okay. I think outlining is, well, I don't know. Let's see. I think outlining is probably my favorite part. I guess just because you can, you know, see such a difference. Now, when I'm done, um, this is going to get coated with a coat of um, zinc free clear. Make sure when you're doing underglazes that you use a zinc free. I've never had any, you know, real problems with the glazes that have zinc in them, but they can mess with the colors. So it's just best to use the zinc free. And I love Amico's HF9 glossy zinc free clear um, 
that's really a good one but I've since been using um, uh, Jessica Putnam Phillips uh, clear glaze which is ink free hers is um, it's called 2167 and um, it's it's real easy to make I can post the anybody wants the recipe what I do is I just make it a gallon at a time and here let me wipe this off and I've already got it figured out so if you so 2167 clear glaze this recipe makes one gallon and it is a cone six glaze but 920 grams of mince bar 600 grams of grossly borate 260 grams of EPK and 220 grams of silica um, I use the 200 um, but I don't think it's I don't I don't think that's real important but um, so if you use this recipe this makes exactly one gallon so that's why I have the recipe right on the gallon jug and I um, I just go up to the my local grocery store and um, <clears throat> they sell this for like 50 cents as big gallon containers used to, you know they guess they come with salad dressing or mayonnaise or and they're great for mixing make that yeah, mixing glazes in I've got a few five gallon buckets but like I said I work out of my house so I don't have a lot of room for you know five gallon buckets sitting all over the place And I don't really dip a lot of um, my stuff. If you if you have, if you're making a lot of mugs and you're dipping your glazes, then it's nice. But if you mix a glaze from powder, it is a dipping glaze. If you mix a glaze from dry ingredients, it is a mixing. It is a dipping glaze. Um, if you buy a liquid glaze. A commercial liquid glaze it is a brushing glaze which means it has a brushing additive in there um, that helps you brush it on but you can um, what I do is if I'm brushing it on I just I just add a little bit of um, gum solution Let's see if I've got some here somewhere oh yeah here's some So there it is finished. I wish you can see all the different all the different colors. So here's the gum solution. It's just let me set this down. It's just Amico's gum solution on there and you put about a teaspoon in a pint of glaze and and, and you don't want to you don't want to if you're making a whole gallon of glaze you don't want to put this in a whole gallon pour a pint out and then put a teaspoon in there because this will get old and it kind of dissolves and um, you have to put it in again so if you've got a whole gallon of glaze and you just keep putting it in there you're gonna end up with a mess so you really don't want to, you really don't want to do that. Just add a little bit at a time. So, but that helps, that helps you brush the glaze on your surface nice and smooth. So I think that's it for today. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have to glaze. Not, nothing too exciting. Um, I've got some more round plates here. I might do a pumpkin on. Maybe if I do some flowers on that or something, I'll, I'll do another video. But hope you enjoyed that you can see the sun's out now when I started this video the sun wasn't out <laughs> well you can see Sophie out there laying on a patio <laughs> I hope you have a really nice day um, and um, play keep glazing keep practicing this is what Simon Leach always says keep practicing and that's that's really all it is is practicing I mean this is not hard um, so 
anyway and if you have any questions let me know um i try to answer them i'm kind of glued to my phone i'm really bad about that so i'll try to answer them if, if i don't answer them i probably have missed it <laughs> so um anyway hope you have a great oh <laughs> they're sideways look at this see i don't have one of these little try i need a tripod is what i need <laughs> all right thanks so much for watching have a great day bye bye